Mm -hmm. Man, it's hot inside. I'm feeling the light. Yeah. The bright. Yeah, not literally, figuratively, <laughs> because we have had a hot week. The Cowboys training camp and Oxnard, it, you know, it starts next week. Fans are excited, none more so than the people we've been bringing into the studio this week. Day three of Cowboys Fandemonium. Meet James Wright, a.k.a. Suit Man, the reigning yes. NFL Cowboys fan of the year. James, welcome, man. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Really glad to be here. Okay, how many suits do you have? So, cowboy <laughs> suits, I have 12. Okay. That's how, and then regular suits, I have about 80. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> you've got, you got to have the closet space then for that. Yeah, I have <laughs> pretty nice size closet. And, and the cowboy suits, they are custom. Yes. Yes, uh, my 12 cowboy suits are custom. I got them made to win a dance contest or a fashion show. When I first started, got here to Texas, I wanted to win a fashion show and I was like, I can't do a jersey because if I do a jersey, everyone's going to have a jersey. So my brother came to visit and we went to a football game. He put on a suit to go to the football game and I was like, you do know we're going to a football game, right? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I dress up to go everywhere. And I was like, we're going to a football game. Like, where they play football. And he's like, I'm wearing a suit. So when we got to the stadium, people were going crazy over him in his blue suit. And I was like, that's it. I'm gonna get me a custom Dallas Cowboys suit made. Tell me where your love for the Dallas Cowboys originated. Uh, from when I was a little kid. Uh, growing up in South Carolina, we had to pick a team back in the 70s. So it was either Dallas or the Steelers. And my best friend was a Steeler fan. So we were rivals at everything. So <laughs> I couldn't be a Steeler fan. So I had to pick the Cowboys. And then their uniforms looked great. They looked really great. They had the red, white, and blue helmets. It was 1976. They had the Centennial. It was pretty awesome. So I was like, that's them. They're always on TV. Hey, you know what? You're always on TV. <laughs> you're, you're, every, you're everywhere, suit man. And, and one of the things that we're proud to say is we did a story on you after you were named uh, NFL Cowboys Fan of the Year. We came uh, to your high school uh, where you, you know, are a junior ROTC instructor at uh, Spruce High School in Dallas ISD. But then we also went to your home in DeSoto, and you're talking about fans. Oh, wow. Being a Cowboys fan. <laughs> Look at that's, that. That's the, that's, the, that's the home. Oh, and, man. And, and it wasn't like he had to organize things. It was <laughs> all in place. Now, the one thing your mom did t share with us is she said when you were a kid, you were known to cry when the Cowboys <laughs> lost. Oh, she ratted you out. <laughs> so I was known to cry if they lost a playoff game, not a regular okay. season game. I would get angry if they lost a regular season game. But the playoff game meant that was the end. That was it. There's, there's no tomorrow. So that's why. Tell me a little bit about what it means for you to be named the Cowboys Fan of the Year. Oh, my God. It was the best part of my life at that time, and it can't, couldn't have happened at a better time. So it meant the world to me. And then just not knowing what I know now, thinking, oh, okay, they named me the Fan of the Year. That's great. I, I got recognized for stuff that I love to do. <laughs> Look at that and picture. Then everything started happening. Like, they came to my house. They picked me up on the bus. They gave me a statue. When they first told me they was giving me a statue, I was like, oh, cool. Nice little statue. I can clean off a desk and I can put it on my desk. She, Savannah, my, my <laughs> rep, was like, no, nah, it's 11 and a half feet tall. I was wow. like, holy cow. So it was at the stadium. So only two people have had statues at AT&T Stadium. One being Tom Landry, right, Tom Landry, and then the other one being this guy. <laughs> James hey, Wright. Do you hey, still have it? Yeah, you, you, have move, you moved it to your home in DeSoto. Yes. So after the game, they took it to my house in DeSoto and it's setting up in my front yard. All right. What do your neighbors say? Because at some point, if I'm your neighbor, Wait, what I'm is the HOA on yeah, this? Yeah. <laughs> at some point, if I'm the HOA, I'm writing your letters. And at some point, if, especially if I'm a neighbor who likes another team, I'm like, dude, you got to move that. <laughs> so I have neighbors that love it, and then I have neighbors that don't like it as much as they love it. But most of my neighbors say that they love it. So I, I get pretty good support in my neighborhood for you know, my statue. 
And I want to ask you, you know, we, we talk about all the fun and the happy stuff, but I know that you, you had a really rough time losing your wife to COVID. What has it been like for you trying to move past that, move forward? And what does it mean to you to bring joy to others through Suit Man? Well, so when my wife died, it was really a rough time. I, I just shut down pretty much. Didn't, didn't want to do anything, didn't want to go anywhere. And my wife came to me after she had passed away and she was like, hey, this is not what we talked about. So you need to get up and you need to get going and do what you said we was going to do. And shortly after that, I got named fan of the year, which was wow. pretty amazing. So when that happened, it really made me emotional because I know if she was here, she would have really supported me. She didn't like all the attention that I would get but she liked me being happy. So Aww. that was the main thing. And you know she's, she's still feeling that. And at that time, she was pushing for you. Maybe yeah. she had a hand in that. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking she had a hand in it. One thing uh, about you, James, is not only do you carry on your wife's legacy, but you are leading future generations. As a, a junior ROTC instructor uh, for Spruce High School in Dallas ISD, you are a distinguished uh, first sergeant. Um, you have served our, con uh, our country honorably. Mm -hmm. You have fought in war, including Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. How much pride do you take in molding the lives of young people, especially in this day and age where young people need so much guidance? I, I really enjoy it. Uh, my students at Spruce High School, they're amazing, to say the least. They're, they're amazing. They support me. Everything I do, I try to support them in everything they do. They uh, keep in touch with me after they graduate, for the most part, most of them, or some of them, keep in touch. So it, it means a lot to be able to do what I do and enjoy molding and talking to the students. What do they think about your alter ego? Oh, they love it. They love it. <laughs> They're like, oh, you was already fan of the year. I was like, no, but it's official now. They, <laughs> they named me fan of the year. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, so James Wright, the suit man. In the world of super fans, we've had Wrecking Ball on, yep. on Monday. Uh -huh. We had Tattoo Mark on Tuesday. Uh -huh. We got Suit Man, you know, you here in studio right now. Mm -hmm. How do you guys keep it civil? Oh. Knowing that you're <laughs> battling for the title. Now, you, you are the NFL Cowboys fan of the year. Right. But yeah. everybody wants to say, I am the biggest Cowboys fan there is. For me and some of us, we, we just follow the star. That's it. It's, it's biblical. So I always ask people, what did the angels tell the wise men to look for to find baby Jesus? The star. The go. star. Yeah. There, I didn't write it. <laughs> it was written a long time ago. So we got to follow the star. What do you say to the next generation of super fans that are in the making right now? Like, how does one go from being just a regular fan to a super fan? So, in my mind, I think everybody is a super fan. So, I use my grandbabies for the example. My grandbabies love me. They don't know anything about me, but they love me. So, since they love me, as long as you love your team, you're a super fan. Just love them. Okay, so the one thing that, uh, that we already know, James, your love for the Cowboys spares no expense. Mm. <laughs> From yeah, your custom no suit <laughs> to, to all your paraphernalia here, here on this table displayed, you rolled up into our parking lot today, <laughs> our CBS <laughs> News Texas parking lot, and your, uh, and your sidekick, you know, uh, uh, um, People, people don't know. Is it called sidekick? Slingshot. Slingshot. Okay. <laughs> Let me get up on my lingo. The slingshot. I was in the side of the slingshot. You gave me a tour around the uh, parking lot. But in your slingshot, you know, how can you quantify that in terms of money spent to support the thing you love the most? It just depends on what you need as an individual. So some of that stuff I needed to have. Because that was, again, my wife, we wanted a slingshot while she was alive and we was going to get a slingshot because we seen him and we loved him. So after I got the slingshot, I was like, you know what? It's going to be all about me and the Cowboys. Mostly me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to have to go out in the parking lot. You got to see it. It looks like the Batmobile. <laughs> it looks like the Batmobile. That's what everyone says. It looks like the Batmobile. And it's even got TVs inside.
Really? Yeah, it's got TV. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, so how often do you get new suits? Quite often. So I was lucky enough to get a sponsor. Grassroots Media sponsored me after I was nominated or as as after I was selected as fan of the year. So that's where all my stuff comes from is Grassroots Media. So they helped me with my custom suit. They helped me with this one. So after I won, the 22 being the year that I got, not Emmett Smith, the year that I got nominated as fan of the year. So that's what that represents. And then on the back. Oh, look at that. James, I love James that. James Wright, number 22. Yeah. Hey, hey, James, before we let you run, um, obviously, Cowboys start training camp in Oxnard next week. You going? I am. Okay. Uh, I know you go to a lot of the game, go to every home game. I know you went to that playoff game in San Francisco. I know because you won NFL Fan of the Year, you got to go to the Super Bowl and the NFL Honors Award Show. They put you up. Um, are you at this point? Are you confident that this is the year? And if so, why? Okay, so I'm confident that we, the Dallas Cowboys, will make it to the NFC Championship game. I'm very confident. With the draft pick that we had, if they work out like I think they're going to work out, I'm very confident that we will take that next step and make it to the NFC Championship. Now, if the Stars a line during that game, then we should be able to make it to the big dance. But we won't talk about that until later on because I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, who <laughs> wants to jinx that? I yeah. jinx but I love the confidence, though. You kind of will it into yeah. existence. But hopefully you don't still cry after playoff games. <laughs> <laughs> We, not we, so much. Yeah, I'm yeah, still yeah. crying we into we, existence. We, 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 got, we got to do the next interview, round two, with James's mom. We got to oh see what God. it's like now when they lose playoff games. It's just a little bit of anger in the house. That's all. It's just a little bit of anger. James, James Wright, a.k.a. Suitman, NFL Cowboys fan of the year. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations on your wonderful award. I know you carry your wife, as Brooke said, in your heart and in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And I know you'll continue molding young minds in Dallas ISD and going forward. And, and, and you bleed cowboys, man. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. You bleed it. Yeah, you do. You need to give him some styling advice. <laughs> yeah, basically, I can use some help with some suits. I don't, I, this, hey, this is, this is Joseph A. Banks. Oh, yeah? This ain't custom. Uh, this I, ain't custom. Joseph A. Banks is a good suit shop. <laughs> that, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. That, that, but I can use some good. custom suits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, J James Wright, thank you, man. And uh, Cowboys Fandemodium is going strong. It continues all week long. Only here on CBS News Texas. You know who that guy is. No, guy yeah. is. His name is Freddie Jones. He's the only trumpeteer in the National Football League. He plays the national anthem for the Cowboys at every home game, preseason, regular season, postseason. He's going to be right here in this studio tomorrow with his magical trumpet. James, you going to listen in? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I seen Freddie Jones and I was like, hey, do you know who you are? And he's like, yeah, I was like, you're Freddie Jones. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know who I am. <laughs> yep, I know, and we know who you are. James Wright, the suit man. Hey, thanks for hanging, man. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, see you guys again, 930 tomorrow morning, right here on the stream. We'll be right back.